right. Yep. <coughs> Tonight's talk is called The Wedding Ritual. Hopefully that will become apparent why later on. Um, it's a fairly short talk, um, and I'm hoping you'll come away with two useful things. One, how you help new people that you meet that uh, might be coming out in Agile and that might need some help. And two, some um, practical advice for something that I used to find very, very painful to the point where I didn't do it for years. Um, and when I was preparing this talk last week, three people unprompted told me, I find this thing very painful. So I think I'm barking up the right tree here. Um, I want to talk a bit about Agile buzzwords first. Um, earlier this year, um, I was at the Lean Agile Scotland conference, the conference that Crush runs. And I was asked to help my friend Joe, who can't be here tonight, with his, his session in the beginner track um, on Agile buzzwords. Um, like any domain, we have a lot of words that we use that aren't really well explained. They're pretty badly misunderstood. We don't use them very well. We, we don't really serve our audience very well. I mean, I remember very distinctly the first time I heard the word Kanban. Um, I had no idea what that meant. Um, no one would help me. And when I did finally ask, people getting an argument about whether it was a Kanban board or a Kanban ticket or the Kanban method or whatever, it wasn't helping. It didn't make it clearer. Um, so that, that didn't help me for a long time. So I know that this is something that some people find painful. Anyway, the goal of the session that we're helping at was to try to give people a little bit of time to ask, you know, what do certain words mean? What are these buzzwords? How can we make it make more sense? And we weren't under any delusions that we were going to fix anything overnight, but hopefully we'd give people at least a forum to ask some questions and maybe get some answers. Um, while we were explaining something, um, I think it was, what is Scrum? And how, how do you sum up quickly in a five, 30 minute window, what is Scrum? Um, I, I don't know how you do that. But during that conversation, we kept mentioning ceremonies, these ceremonies we keep doing. And one of the people asked a follow-up question quite rightly, what are ceremonies? Um, at the time, I think we gave an OK answer. And the answer was something like, um, a ceremony is where people get together at a predefined time, um, go through a well-known process. Sometimes they've got roles to play. Usually there's a goal or an outcome we want to reach. Um, and that was kind of what we said. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. It probably helped a little bit. And I, I think we give retrospective as an example of this, a, a retrospective being a fairly common ceremony that people experience in the Agile world. Um, our asker was still not satisfied. They then follow up with, isn't that just a meeting? And I was like, damn, that's a really good question. Isn't, isn't it just a meeting? Uh, and I had to go, yeah, it probably is a meeting, right? It is, um, it's a meeting, but we a bit of specialization. You gather together, like a meeting. You usually talk about something that you expect, like a meeting. And you've got some sort of structure, like a meeting. And you've got some hopeful outcome, like a meeting. And I know some of you are thinking right now, our meetings are nothing like that. They don't have structure and are about nothing. I can't help you. You've got a bigger problem. Come and ask me about that later. That's not what this talk's about. Um, think about the ceremony that most people in, outside of the agile world think of when you talk about ceremonies. And you're probably going to immediately think of the wedding ceremony. Now, there's some cultural bias in this. We're, we are where we are, and the audience is what it is. But I would bet if I said, name a ceremony, you'd come up with this one, the wedding ceremony. And I would bet more that if I asked three or four of you to draw end to end every step involved in a wedding ceremony, there'd be a lot of crossover. You would have people turning up at a certain time. You'd have the officiator. You'd have the vows. You might have the after party. You might have blah, blah, blah. And they're all going to be the same. There's lots of different shapes and sizes of weddings. There's lots of different things that people want from it. People have different outcomes, different things that they want. But you're going to draw a lot of the same steps. I hope you would agree with that. Um, they're a process. They've got a well-understood structure. They have a well-understood outcome. They usually have a predefined time, unless you're in Vegas, in which case, who knows what's going to happen. But these are ceremonies. These are things that have a known, known plan, a known process. As part of some research I'm doing for a talk, hopefully next year, um, I've been thinking about something quite similar to ceremonies, and that's rituals. Um, one definition for rituals that I, I think is decent, it's not perfect, is this. Ceremonies involve a process 
whereas rituals involve rules and regulations. There's a subtle difference there, a process versus rules and regulations. I prefer this next one way better. A ritual refers to a group of actions performed for their symbolic value. On the other hand, a ceremony is performed on a special occasion. And I was like, that seems kind of familiar. There's certainly a load of stand uh, ceremonies that we have done that seem kind of special, like we're doing it right, and other times where you feel like you're just kind of going through the ropes and following the rules and doing that. So I want to come back to the Lean Agile world for a second, um, and I want to think about one of your own ceremonies. Um, it's one that I think almost everyone will be familiar with, um, and that is stand-ups. If Agile has anything approaching a wedding ceremony, it's the stand-up. Everyone could probably draw it what it is, and probably very few people will actually get it right. It's the ceremony most likely to end up in an Agile divorce, people walking away from a transformation. It's usually bad. Why is that? Why do we almost all hate stand-ups? And like I say, I have seen so many bad stand-ups in my own experience. I had three people completely unprompted. Um, I wasn't telling them I was talking about this. He came up and said, yeah, the thing that I really hate is stand-ups last week. Um, it was the Glasgow Tech Christmas party last week, which was excellent. Um, so that probably skewed it a little bit, but nobody likes their stand-ups. The reason for that is they're usually not that engaging. They're not about getting people involved in the process. The three questions, what did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? What are your blockers? These are boxes to be ticked to do waterfall by any other name. When you treat it like that, when you say everyone has to go around and tick these three boxes in waterfall project management, you're not doing agile. Let's be clear, Scrum does not say you, you do that. If you want to have a we argue about that later, let's get into it. But um, the Scrum guide does not tell you to just ask the three questions. It doesn't do that. If you're just ticking boxes, there's no engagement, there's no purpose, and there's no joy. Another reason is people go on for far too long about things I do not care about. And that's pretty normal, because you're getting them to stand there every single day and justify their existence. You're making them come to a stand up every morning and speak and say, I was here, I did something, and I did something yesterday. And that's what they feel about it. They're not there to help the team. They're there to say, ooh, what did I do yesterday? I need to actually make it sound like I was doing something. Um, most of the time, what they're saying isn't news, it's just filler. It's not interesting. People also often leave all of their issues until they stand up, and that, that's the one that annoys me the most. If you're sat in a room together, probably no further apart than anyone in this room, just go and have a conversation during the day. If you're waiting till they stand up, you're just wasting time. Please just go and speak to each other. So the, the point of a stand up is to get engagement and collaboration and alignment. The way that we do stand-ups doesn't do any of that, not a single bit. These are stand-up rituals. They're focusing on rules and regulations. There's no celebration. So how do we fix our stand-ups? How do we make them finally work? Make it a ceremony. Focus on the work. Don't make it about the people. Focus on the work and the things that we're doing. So if you've got a board, and you should have a board, visualize your work. Go over to it and start on the right-hand side, the things that is closest to being done, and get people to talk about the work, not what people are doing. Start on the far right-hand side and say, OK, where is this thing? Oh, it's, uh, it's in progress. That's fine. Don't need any more than that. If it's in progress, there's no problem. Just say, it's in progress. Move on to the next thing. Keep doing that over and over again. Don't stop for the people. If people don't speak on any given day, that's fine. It just means that they didn't have any problems and they feel like they're aligned. That's OK. They're allowed to not speak. Take a minute to think about your goals as well. I mean, if you're doing a scrummy kind of process and you've got a sprint goal, which you should, or if you're doing any other process, you should have a goal. Take a minute to think, are we progressing towards a goal? Let's say you're deploying a new API. Think, are we getting closer to building the API? Are we going off target? Should we change what the target is? That is the purpose of having your daily stand up. Take a little minute. Just one to go, are we heading the right direction? Yes, cool. If not, bigger conversation. Does that make sense? Good. It's about alignment. 
I said at the start, I'd give you two bits of advice. Um, one that was about uh, making things less painful to do, that was a bit about stand-ups. Walk the damn board. Just do that. Don't get in the people. Walk the board. Um, I also said I'd give you some advice to help new people. Be careful with buzzwords. The words we use matter. Explain them to new people matters. Make sure that you all have shared understanding because if you do the stand-up part, but you're all speaking a different language, you still don't have alignment. You need to make sure that you're speaking the same words and that you have the same understanding of those words. Shared common understanding is very, very important. Final question. I mentioned earlier that the ritual part was part of a bigger talk that I'm hopefully doing next year. Um, I want you to take part in a thought experiment. And I don't want an answer. You can come talk about this afterwards. Um, what if you did Agile without any ceremonies or any rituals? No stand-ups, no retros, nothing like that. How would you achieve the same goals? How would you get alignment, clarity of work, collaboration, if you don't have these rituals and ceremonies? Think about that. I've done it. I worked on a project for a couple of years where we did not ever do ceremonies. The manifesto, the Agile manifesto, doesn't mention ceremonies anywhere. There's not one in it. The only thing it says is meet regularly to talk about the work. That is it. Thank you.